Hello, thank you for watching my video strategy guide. This guide will cover the heroic version of your Asajj the Unsleeping in the Dragon Soul Raid instance. This is one of the heroic encounters your raid will likely consider after killing heroic Morchok, along with Zana's and possibly Hegara. It proved to be the most forgiving for our raid, and therefore was our second kill. This fight has a fairly steep 10 minute enrage timer, and you'll want to 1 tank, 2 heal it, and bring good DPS. If you have a DK tank available to your raid, you'll want them to be the tank. The amount of DPS required will depend somewhat on how many black oozes you get and therefore how many adds you'll have to kill. I'd recommend having everyone sitting above 30k DPS to be comfortable. Higher DPS, of course, can balance out lower DPS, especially if you have some very efficient AoEers. This fight is identical to normal, except this time your Asajj will activate 4 slimes instead of 3, and of course all health and damage is buffed. Because of this, the kill priority for slimes is quite different than normal. For a while we tried following a list of the 6 possible combos in which should be killed, but we realized very quickly that it can be simplified to a basic priority. If yellow is activated, kill it. If there is no yellow, kill green. There is one combo exception to this rule, green, yellow, black, red. You can identify it because it will activate green and red together. Since it is impossible to live through green and red together, you will not kill yellow and instead you will kill green. Since your raid will only be killing the yellow or green oozes, you can start your raid standing between those two spawn points, to the left of the boss from where you parachute in. This will minimize movement and increase DPS. With yellow and green now the priority kill targets, your healers will need to learn to deal with the purple ooze and the deep corruption debuff. Deep corruption will apply to every player in the raid once your Asajj absorbs the purple ooze. This debuff will apply a stack to a player every time the player receives a heal. When the stack reaches 5, it will explode, dealing 97k shadow damage to all players in the raid. The debuff has a 25 second duration, at which point it will refresh once, dropping any stacks. Deep corruption will fall off as the next set of oozes spawn. Your healers will need to control their healing and be very careful about healing choices. Deep corruption can quickly wipe a raid. Your healers will need to be able to see stacks on players on their raid frames. During deep corruption, your tank may or may not explode. You will be able to control this, and it will depend on the other oozes that are active. A raid can definitely survive a deep corruption explosion, but this will leave them low and susceptible to other damage. There are a few spells that should never be used during deep corruption. Tranquility, Divine Hymn, Atonement, Wild Growth, and Chain Heal are the biggest risks. Since Tranquility and Divine Hymn count as a separate heal per tick, and you have no control over their targets, these can wipe a raid in a hurry. Chain Heal applies a stack per bounce, while Growth a stack per person, and along with Atonement, they are similarly hard to control, and can accidentally heal someone with a 4 stack at an inopportune moment and cause a wipe. Ground effect heals are very efficient here, as they will only give 1 stack when a player enters the effect, and no more stacks throughout the duration. If a player leaves and re-enters the effect, they will gain an additional stack, but there is minimal movement in this encounter. Hots can be very useful here as they only apply one stack on application, and the tank can be pre-hotted before deep corruption. There are a few other spells that I feel are worth noting here to help healing. For druids, efflorescence at this time causes no stacks, but I expect them to change this at some point. For shamans, earth living, earth shield, healing stream totem, and spirit link totem all cause no stacks. For paladins, beacon, guardian, lay on hands, and ward of glory also cause no stacks. Holy Radiance acts like ground effects, applying only one stack on the initial application. For Priests, Desperate Prayer and Echo of Light cause no stacks. Penance will only apply one stack per channel. Lightwell applies one stack per clicker, and I don't think it would be worth the risk. Set bonuses and weapon procs will not cause stacks. A Shadow Priest will also be able to help, as VE heals do not cause stacks either. All other healing abilities for other classes cause no stacks. This is what makes DK tanks so OP for this fight, as they can heal themselves without limit. Two of the possible combos will be very difficult for the healers to handle. The most intense healing combo will be the aforementioned exception to the rule, green, yellow, black, red. You'll need to save bloodlust, raid CDs, and healing cooldowns for this combo. Because purple is absent, you'll be able to use your no-no healing CDs, like Divine Hymn and Tranquility. Purple, red, yellow, black will be the most tactically difficult. Your raid will be taking damage from red and adds, but you will not be able to heal freely because of deep corruption. Your healers will need to work together and have a firm plan in place for this combination. You may elect to use damage reduction CDs for this combo instead of green, yellow, black, red if you are able to survive yellow without them. 
The other tactical difference from normal here will involve the blue ooze and mana void. The first mana void you will want to leave alive to be slowly whittled down and killed immediately on the next blue ooze. When the first mana void spawns, pop any raid mana cooldowns you have available, such as Mana Tide or Hymn of Hope. If you have neither of these available, make sure all casters have mana potions to pop. When the next mana void spawns, you will have the lower health one from the previous ooze ready to kill after everyone is drained for instant mana regeneration. The void that spawns second you will now leave for the next blue ooze. This fight will put a lot of focus on your healers and their skills. As long as you have enough DPS to kill the oozes, the adds, and beat in rage, it will be up to your healers to do the rest. As with other fights in the past that have required healers to go against their instinct and not heal empty health bars, it will take some practice. Also, don't do like I did and get excited, lose focus, and pop tranquility right at the end of the fight, almost wiping the raid. Thank you for watching this guide. I apologize for the length of time since our previous kill. We have made a few personnel changes to our raid, and look forward to getting back on the progression grind with more guides to follow.